Hai anda ceng, lancar orang bos, boleh buat. Nasir. Lagi orang dah bersenduk. Des des des. Kalau tu dah sen buat dah jadi sah. Des des des. You ain't gonna create that. That word there. Come on now. Come on, God bless. When they say practicing position, that's what they doing. Practicing. They never really graduated. They still practicing. All right. <laughs> Think about it. They never get to a point where they master it. Because it's not for them to master. If man mastered everything, then what would God do? Wow. Wow. Come on. Huh? If the woman that had the issue of blood mm. in her life for so long wow. that she went to every physician that was in the city, spent her life savings wow. trying to get healed. Mm. But one day she heard that the Savior was coming to her. And she purposed in her heart she began to talk to her own, her own self. Yeah, on, she began to tell herself, she said, now, if I could just touch to him and his God, yes, sir, yes, sir. I, believe, mm, I, said, I believe, I believe, mm. I behold. Mm. Yeah. And guess what happened? She did. It was, it was her faith. Mm. But I just want you to stay, I just want you to, to, to just kind of rest that on your mind that man's extremity is God's opportunity. Yeah. God's opportunity. That's his opportunity. That's his opportunity. Come on. Huh? His opportunity. Have we not have we forgotten the mercy that God has already bestowed upon us? Well, come on now. Huh? Have we forgotten what he's already done done? All right. Mm. And what he's yet going to do? In all of our lives, I thank God today. Amen. But remember that. Write it down. Put it on a piece of paper. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. And when you find yourself feeling sad and lonely and, and, and your condition seems like it's about to overtake you, tell yourself, man's extremity is God's opportunity. God called me, God made me, God knows every nerve, every fiber of my body. So be it. Let his will be done. All right. Mm -hmm. Let his will be done. You ain't going nowhere, no way to God get ready. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Until he say so. Come on now. You, you may walk around with illness for 10 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. And even though they expected you to pass last year, but you're still here. All right, now, come yeah. on, man. That's enough to give God some praise for right there. Come on. They taught you, dog. Huh? Come on. But every knockdown is not a knockout. All right. All right. Oh. <laughs> every time I get knocked down, don't mean I'm out. Don't mean that. You take boxers, when they boxing, I was, I've been watching some of the late Muhammad Ali's Come on, videos. Mm. Oh, God. He only was knocked down mm. twice throughout his whole career. Whoa. But each time he got knocked down, he jumped right back up. Mm -hmm. He would jump up with anger. Mm. Not at the opponent, but at the fact that he allowed himself to get knocked down. Oh, come on, Pastor. Come on, come on, come on. Allowed. Wow, wow, wow. That's saying something. Because he said, I'm the champ. Well, mm. I don't beat everybody else. My goodness. You're not even the top contender, but I, I let you mm -hmm. knock me down. Mm -hmm. So now I got angry with me. All right. You see where I'm going with this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, man. I, I done got angry with myself because I allowed myself to get knocked down. Oh, wow. 
So when he got up, he wouldn't, he wasn't angry at the opponent. He charged the opponent, but he each time he would hit the man four, five, six times, he was saying, You ain't gonna do it no more. That's right, that's right, that's right. You ain't gonna do it no more. That's right. Mm. When are we gonna get tired of Satan knocking right. us down? That's right. When are we gonna tell him, you ain't gonna do it no more? That's it, that's good. When are we gonna tell him, I'm covered under the blood? That's right. When we gonna tell him by his blood, by his stripes, I'm already here. Yeah. When we gonna tell him that instead of me getting knocked down? You gotta get angry with your own self. Tell your own self. Stop waiting on somebody else to tell you. Every knockdown is not a knockout. Huh? I've been knocked down several times. Got back up. Still get knocked down sometimes, but I get right back up. Come on. I, I, don't, I don't stay down because you knock me down. That don't mean you knock me out. Satan is not knocking us out. He just knocking us down. We just got to learn how to get back up. This ain't the way I would. This, 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 you know, he, he got this. I was looking at something totally different. But we got to learn that. Huh? And the enemy comes. Yeah. He comes at you. He gonna come at you. Mm. All kind of ways. Okay. Yeah. I saw him in a dream last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came. I'm sitting at a table. Big long table. All of a sudden there's someone just sitting to my right over here. Light road. Shine, shine, shine. Curly, curly hair, like, wait a and I went to speak to him. He said, yeah, I'm he. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I began to rebuke him. That's right. Saving himself. Wow, wow, wow. Saving himself. Yeah. That was about three thirty. I think the last time I got that little coughing attack and I got up. My yeah. Saving. Oh yeah, that was him. I was sleeping fine until the end. Yeah. Attack of the end. Trying to knock me down. But he's alive. Because if you knock me down on this side, Jesus don't raise me up over here. Because right. I still got a work to do. Hey, you got a work to do. Come on. Come on, hey, you ain't out of the race here. That's why I said the race is not given to the swift, not the strong, but to the one that can just endure. That means just hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold, on, right? hold your hope right where you at. Just hold on. Hold on. Just hold on. That's all you got to do. Just, just hold on. It don't look good. It don't feel good. But just hold on. Hold on. Just hold on. You got to hold on. See, what happens is when you turn loose. But you have to learn how to just hold on. If you can just hold on, you can make it. If you can hold on. That's why I said we got we to hold on right now. Come on now, you ain't the only one going through. That's right. Come on. Trouble knocks at everybody's door. Hardship knocks at everybody's door. Nobody's excluded. Nobody's excluded. But it's being saints, Christians, born again believers. This is where our faith kicks in. All right. Huh? Your faith got to kick in. <laughs> It's got to kick in. Let me give you a scripture and we can get out of here. Take me to Psalm 106. <laughs> Take me to Psalms 106. We, gonna, we thank God for everybody today. So, Gail, it's a blessing to see you. A man extremity is God's opportunity in your life if you let it be. It's up to you. The enemy desire is to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. His desire is to cut everybody off. Huh? But see, he really can't cut you off. He desired to do so. Yes. But if God got you in his hand, he's got to get permission to even touch you. 
Come on. He's got to ask God first. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. He, did he do it for Job? He sure did. Huh? He sure did. What did God tell us? You can do everything else. Don't touch his Just soul. don't touch his soul. That's it. So if you make him sick, that's fine. I still got it. You just don't touch his soul. Right. Cause sickness to come all over that brother. Mm. Everybody left because he got sick, mm -hmm. but they didn't realize that was God in the work. Psalms one hundred six, verse seven. When you have to say Amen. Amen. Psalms 106, verse 7. It says, we're going to start at verse 7. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea. Wow. Even at the Red Sea. You may take your seat. Yes, they do. Huh? Yes, Calling on God to do something when you ain't ready to do nothing. <laughs> well. Our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. How he did, how he what? Brought them out? Yes, yes. How he caused all the different things to happen so the Pharaoh would turn them loose. God had to harden Pharaoh's heart. But we know that story. He said, but nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to what? Be what? No. He saved you and I for what? His name's sake. Huh? It ain't about us. It ain't about our name's sake. We don't have no name. We ain't no power in our name. Huh? Who you heal in, in, in Milton Castro? Huh? Who did Larry Carroll raise? Nobody. Huh? Huh? Who did Celeste Anderson go to the grave for? Nobody. Huh? How many stripes were put on your back? For people. Nobody. Huh? Who nailed you to the cross? Huh? Who put a spear in your side? That blood and water would run out. Nobody did. Nobody. He said, but for nevertheless, even after all they provoking, even after all that mumbling and groaning, he says, nevertheless, he saved them. Come on. Huh? He saved them. They come, they mumbling and groaning, and ne nothing was never right for them. But yet it's still what? He saved them. Huh? You cried for 450 years to be brought out, to be delivered, to be put on something in a different world, in a different path. Now when it happens, you're still mumbling and you're grumbling. Huh? Right. You're still mumbling and grumbling. He said, but nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. See, when you're God's people, God don't protect you. God don't watch out for you. God got you covered. In verse 9, I'm going to clear it out. He closed it up. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was what? Dried up. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. All of this that God had done, and they still weren't satisfied. Wow. Wasn't enough. Just like people today want more, want more. Never, never satisfied, but you want more. But God has already saved you. He saved you for a purpose. So if he allows a, 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 a sickness or something for you to go through it, you just go through it. Yes, sir. Because it's for the glory of God. Whatever God allows to happen in your life is for his glory. How can he get the glory out of your life if he don't use you as an instrument? That's why man's extremity is God's opportunity. If we allow God to use us, See, they, they had priests, they had elders down there for 450 years, but God had to pick one man yeah. to go get them out. They had, they had 70 down there. Yes, 70. But God had to send one to go and get them out. And then they mumble and grumble against that. So God is going to use us 
But we just don't know how. For him to get what? The glory out of your life. The glory. Because it's all for his glory. The scripture says to God be the glory. Do people really understand what he's saying? To God be the glory? When you say to God be the glory, whatever is unleashed, and, and God has, the, the Satan has to go to God and get permission to unleash something on you. So whatever it is unleashed on you is for God's glory. Job went through it. For the glory of God. Job know he ain't did nothing. But serving God the best he knew how. He just got caught up in the middle of a wall. But God said, okay. Him and Satan, when they had a, Satan had a conversation, God, I tell you, where you going? Walking to and fro, up and down in the earth, trying to see who I can find. And that same spirit is doing the same thing today. Walking to and fro, trying to see who he can find. But God had a just man there. And he asked him, said, have you considered my servant Job? Have you looked at Job? Satan tried to play it off like, well, not really, but since you mentioned his name, God knew you was looking at him all the time. <laughs> all right. Huh? Well, now, since you mentioned his name, you know, he, you know, then Satan wants to tell God, well, the only reason he served you is because you blessing him. Wow. Hello. Wow. That's what, that is the reason some folks just serve him. All right, yeah. I'll drop that on you. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. Just serve for that. So, Satan so tells God that's the only reason he served. He said, but now if you take all that away from him and, 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 and take that hedge covering that you got around him, so you've got to realize God got a hedge around you. You cover. Satan can get so only so close. He can get to the hedge, but he can't get inside of the hedge unless God give him permission. Can't do it. Can't do it. So Satan now started, he said, now if you move that hedge from around him, so I make him curse you to your face. God said, okay, I'll take that. I'll remove it. God knew Job wasn't going to curse him. He said, do whatever you want to do to him. Just don't bother his soul. Just don't touch him. Just don't touch him. But we know today that man's extremity is God's opportunity. If you let it. If you let it be. Extremity. When man is going as far as he can go. His intellect, all of his wisdom, all of his knowledge has taken him as far as he can go. That's when God steps in. Man ain't smart as God anyway. God created him. Huh? Created him. So he don't he don't have the wisdom that God had. He didn't go to the cross and die for us. Didn't save us. That we all may have a right to the tree of life. But I thank God today. Just want to just put something on your mind. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. Let God work in your life. Don't have a pity party. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Learn to see yourself as God sees you. God sees you as something beautiful. Something precious. Uplifting. Come on. Uplifting. Don't you know, and let me say this. Don't you know, Jesus was so compassionate, so full of love, so full of compassion, in his days that he walked on the face of the earth, he couldn't even go to a funeral what we like to go today. <laughs> couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He saw a procession coming out of town one day, out of a city. People were weeping and moaning, and the compassion fell on them so heavy. He started crying. He raised him right, up, right back then. Hey, the woman's son, right back to it. Come on. So we serve a God that we have been created in his image. He feels our hurt. He like lady. He feels our pain. He feels it. But he also said he would not put no more on us than we could bear. 
Come on now. We have someone that is always interceding for us. Always watching. Always strengthening us. Always encouraging. That little steel voice. You can make it. You got this. You're stronger than that. You got it. You got this thing. Come on. And when we say, whatever thou will be, we say it and we mean it, and then God have his way. In our lives, in our lives, they're destined for greatness. We are destined for greatness. We're destined for greatness. We are. We are. When we learn that man's extremity is God's opportunity. Write it down. Because that's gonna be we gonna that's gonna be a series we're gonna work on. Man's extremity is God's opportunity for him to work and to move. Be encouraged. Look up and live. 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 Huh? He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundant. So we live and we move and we breathe in Jesus. Nobody else. We live and we breathe in him. But I thank God today. Hope something was said that would bless you today. Be a blessing to you. Remember what was spoken. Remember. You are his crown creation. The joy of his life. And he gives us life. So that's what we do. And we thank God today for everyone that came out. But I just want to encourage us all. Look up and live. Amen. Amen.